Hello, and welcome to BARDA Industry Day 2021. I'm Gary Disbro, the BARDA Director. This year's theme is strengthening partnerships in advancing innovation. You'll hear these themes throughout the presentation over the next two days, and they are critical to BARDA's continued success to address 21st century health security threats. I want to start by thanking the entire BARDA organization for their tireless efforts to address the COVID-19 pandemic and their dedication to public health. I would also like to thank our USG partners, industry partners, and private sector partners and health care workers for their hard work to bring an end to this pandemic. Art Industry Day is our opportunity to engage with you, our current partners, and those that might be interested in partnering with BARDA to develop life-saving medical countermeasures. We have an exciting lineup of speakers, and you will hear broad topics ranging from pandemic preparedness to the importance of diversity and inclusion in the development of medical countermeasures. You will also hear from our Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response, Ms. Don O'Connell. Equally important to BARDA providing information to you is for you to engage with the BARDA team. We have implemented live interaction sessions to allow for you to better engage, even though this is a still a virtual event. We need to hear from you, our partners. We want to understand any concerns you have, your views on our strategy, and how we can better be partners in this enterprise. The director's update is my opportunity to highlight successes and challenges from the previous fiscal year and provide you with our vision for a robust medical countermeasure enterprise as we move forward. BARDA's role is to develop medical countermeasures, vaccines, therapeutics, diagnostics, and devices to address chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear threats, pandemic influenza, as well as emerging infectious diseases. Our model is to partner with you, private industry and academic institutions to develop these medical countermeasures. This slide highlights the over 300 entities that we've partnered with in the past several years. If you want to engage with part BARDA and become one of our partners and be on this slide, please engage with us today through BARDA Industry Day, as well as the Tech Watch program. BARDA brings more than funding to the table in this partnership. We also bring together subject matter expertise in science, regulatory and quality affairs, manufacturing, clinical and non-clinical, as well as contracting professionals to help you develop your programs. We view this as a true partnership, and it has always been said that your success is our success, and I want to thank all of our past, current, and potential future partners for their hard work in developing these medical countermeasures. We also partner extensively across the federal government with multiple agencies. BARDA is the advanced research and development arm for the federal government, and we act as a transition partner for programs that may have been developed at NIH or Department of Defense. We also collaborate across the U.S. government under the Public Health Emergency Medical Countermeasure Enterprise, or the FEMSI, where we share strategic ideas as well as review portfolios. The FEMSI collaboration has been enhanced during our response to COVID-19 under OWS and now the Countermeasure Acceleration Group, or the CAG. It is critical that we maintain this momentum as we move forward to address, to address the American Pandemic Preparedness Plan to be able to support the development of medical countermeasures to address any future pandemics and better prepare our nation. These partnerships have led to 61 FDA approvals, licensures, and clearances. They cut across our threat space for CBRN, pandemic influenza, and emerging infectious diseases and represent vaccines, therapeutics, diagnostics, as well as devices. FDA approvals is just one hallmark of how we measure our success with our partners such as you, but it is not the only measure of success. We need to make sure that we are maintaining a robust advanced research and development pipeline so that we can continue to develop products and push them forward to FDA approval. Critical to this portfolio is support and funding that we receive from Congress. This slide highlights the previous fiscal years and the funding that we have received from Congress. In FY20, we received a bump because we received additional Ebola supplemental funding of 535 million. We greatly appreciate that funding and it has allowed us to do critical work. If we did not have, if we had not received that funding, our funding in FY20 would have been flat with FY19. 
In FY21, we've received a slight increase in funding and together across programs and our contracting professionals, we've invested nearly $2 billion to support our partners in CBRN, pandemic influenza and emerging infectious diseases. We anticipate another slight increase for fiscal year 2022 and with additional funds, BARDA can do more to make sure that we have a robust medical countermeasure portfolio and can address 21st century health security threats as we move forward. I also want to highlight the critical investments that have been made to address COVID-19. We did this in partnership with our colleagues at the Joint Program Executive Office at the Department of Defense. In total, we've invested over $47.5 billion in vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics. And in fiscal year 21 alone, that total was $36.5 billion. That's nearly 20-fold increase in what we typically invest to address CBRN threats, pandemic influenza, and emerging infectious disease threats of $2 billion. We are very thankful for our collaboration with our JPO colleagues. And this partnership has allowed us to not only invest in and develop these critical medical countermeasures, but also procure them and bring them forward to the American people. Very early on, we engaged with you, our partners. We established an industry call even before the pandemic health emergency, pandemic health, public health emergency was declared. There were 1500 participants where we highlighted our strategies for the development of medical countermeasures. We immediately established an MCM portal which acted as a single point of entry for all of our industry partners who may be interested in working with the federal government to develop medical countermeasures to address COVID-19. To date, we have received over 4,500 submissions. Those that were identified as being of highest priority, meaning they would have an immediate impact on the COVID-19 pandemic, were invited in for a Corona Watch meeting. This is where companies can meet with the federal government and we typically have representation from across the U.S. government of 20 to 60 individuals so that the companies can highlight their technologies and determine where they might be a fit for development. We've held over 670 Corona Watch meetings and another point of reference in a typical year, absent a pandemic, we hold about 100 Tech Watch meetings. We also quickly modified our um, funding announcements through our easy broad agency announcement as well as our broad agency announcement to allow for submissions of proposals to address COVID-19. And we continue to engage with industry and our congressional members who are providing support, highlighting the successes that we've had and how we could do more if additional funding was provided. Additionally, early during the pandemic, we stood up the Interagency Medical Countermeasure Task Force. This was an interagency effort across multiple agencies and departments. And this group of individuals was responsible for reviewing the white papers that came in through the MCM portal. We, there were three working groups, one for diagnostics, one for vaccines, and one for therapeutics. And it was critically important for, this, for us to have this collaboration so that we could quickly review all of those submissions. In February and March, we also made initial investments using advanced research and development as well as pandemic influenza funding since we didn't yet have a supplemental funding for COVID-19. We looked across our portfolio and identified partners that had technologies that could be leveraged to quickly address COVID-19. We knew that it was critical to provide the seed funding to get them jump started in their development. And then obviously in May of 2020, Operation Warp Speed was stood up, and BARDA has played a critical role in the development of medical countermeasures under Operation Warp Speed, and now the Countermeasure Acceleration Group, or the CAG. This next slide highlights some of the critical investments that we made even before having supplemental funding. As I mentioned, we looked across our portfolio of partners. We made investments with Regeneron, which uses the same technology that they developed for their Ebola therapeutic, the first license. Uh, Ebola therapeutic and provided them funding so that they could quickly start developing COVID-19 monoclonal antibodies. Our partnership with J&J &J, Janssen was developing an Ebola um, vaccine which is licensed in the EU. We quickly provided them funding to develop a COVID-19 vaccine as well as Sanofi Pasteur which we partnered with for multiple years for the first uh, FDA licensed recombinant influenza vaccine and quickly pivoted them and utilized their technology to develop a COVID-19 vaccine. 
On March 18th of 2020, we received our first supplemental funding under COVID-19, and we quickly made large investments with additional partners to develop vaccines and therapeutics. <clears throat> Excuse me. These investments have laid the groundwork for the portfolio of products that is now supported under Operation Warp Speed in the CAG. And BARDA has pay, played a critical role in developing these products uh, and making sure that we had a robust portfolio with multiple products uh, to bring forward to the American people. This slide highlights, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of work by the BARDA organization as well as our USG colleagues to develop medical countermeasures. To date, we've invested in 97 specific products. We have invested over $47.5 billion. We have delivered over 511 million vaccines, 418 of those million of those being administered with over 190 million Americans being fully vaccinated. As I mentioned, we had received submissions of over 4,500 white papers and held over 670 tech watch meetings. In addition to that, we have 26 diagnostic tests that have been supported by BARDA that have been granted emergency use authorization by the Food and Drug Administration and over 144 million diagnostic tests shipped to the American people. I want to thank the BARDA organization for all of their hard work and dedication to public health, as well as our USG partners who've been critical for the success in bringing all of these medical countermeasures forward to the American people. In addition, there have been several executive orders that have been issued over the past year. And I want to highlight two in specifically, the executive order on sustaining public health supply chain and the executive order on America's supply chain. And BARDA is taking immediate action to address these two executive orders. Early in the pandemic, the supply chain constraints and vulnerabilities were highlighted. There were shortages in personal protective equipment, active pharmaceutical ingredients, as well as critical raw materials and consumables that are necessary for manufacturing vaccines and other sterile injectables. BARDA is taking immediate action. In order to address the American Pandemic Preparedness Plan and its expand domestic manufacturing and surge capacity, we need to increase by an order of magnitude our domestic capacity um, to address these uh, surges. Investments have begun to maximize the impacts of the supply chain and make sure that we have not only sufficient supplies here at home, but also for our international partners. And we also want to minimize the impacts on the broader, <clears throat> excuse me, healthcare supply chain. Investments that we are making include those for expanding capacity for consumables, raw materials, needles and syringes, and fill finish capacity. And we will work hard to make sure that we can increase the capacities so that we can address not only the USG need uh, for vaccines and therapeutics, but also our partners on the global stage. BARDA has a proven success record of partnering with you, our industry partners, and in rapidly developing medical countermeasures for emerging threats. In 2009, we were able to develop FDA clear diagnostics, as well as the first FDA licensed recombinant influenza vaccine and the first cell based influenza vaccine that are now the basis for some of the seasonal influenza vaccines. In 2015, under Zika, we were able to use supplemental funding to develop multiple Zika diagnostics that are now cleared by the Food and Drug Administration. And in Ebola, we started our efforts in 2014, and under supplemental funding, we have now achieved the first FDA-licensed vaccine, two FDA-licensed therapeutics, as well as an FDA-cleared rapid diagnostic test. So while we've had amazing success and we are appreciative of the supplemental funding that we've received, supplemental funding is not a way to build a program and it is not sustainable. So we're very excited about America's Pandemic Preparedness Plan, which has a potential $65 billion budget so that BARDA potentially could have sustained funding to not only address emerging infectious diseases, but better prepare our nation for pandemic preparedness. I want to quickly highlight uh, several things for fiscal year 21. We've provided medical uh, countermeasures and subject matter expertise for our international response. We've had discussions and partnered with WHO, CEPI, and Gavi, providing critical technical expertise for expansion of vaccine manufacturing. Six products were procured for the strategic national stockpile to include the first BARDA procured uh, novel antibacterial. 
We kicked off BART Adventures, which you will hear much more about uh, in later sessions. We invested in our first four redirect awards. The redirect program is a collaborative uh, partnership between our chemical branch under the CBRN division, as well as the Division of Research, Innovation and Ventures. And this program is looking at repurposing FDA approved products to address chemical threats, sorry, chemical injuries. It is critically important to have products that are available uh, in the hospital, at pharmacies, or potentially in first responder vehicles so that they can be administered quickly. FDA approved products that we might be able to show efficacy against chemical injuries are perfect uh, to address that critical gap in preparedness. We also have new funding programs for multi-organ tissue chips and next generation sequencing. We are supporting the executive order on modernizing influenza vaccines, expanding our partnership for, with Sanofi for recombinant influenza vaccines, as well as that space could be used to address the COVID-19 pandemic. And importantly, we've hired 62 new federal employees, 42 new contractors, and seven new fellows. It is critical that BARDA continues to expand our talented staff so that we are able to not only address pandemics, epidemics, and public health emergencies, but also do our day-to-day -day work um, partnering with you for CBRN uh, threats, pandemic influenza, and emerging infectious diseases. Even though we were in the midst of the pandemic, partnering with you, we were still able to support six new FDA approvals that include uh, products to address Ebola, burns, uh, as well as <clears throat> a smallpox antiviral. Through these partnerships, we have now brought six new FDA approved products to the American people, and we want to congratulate our partners for all of their hard work. Today, you're going to hear from the, divi the different divisions that cut across the BARDA organization and their specific goals for fiscal year 2022. I'm not going to highlight all of these today because you'll hear about uh, these as we move through the programs, but I do want to mention one thing that is very important, that our TechWatch program is now open for business. You've heard me mention this very early on, that you can register for a TechWatch meeting if you're interested in engaging with BARDA. TechWatch program was suspended while we responded to the COVID-19 pandemic, and we appreciate your patience as we had to address the volume of uh, submissions that we've received um, to address the COVID-19 pandemic. But collectively within BARDA, we feel it is time to reopen the TechWatch program. And if you're interested in partnering with BARDA to address CBRN, pandemic influenza, and emerging infectious diseases, you can now go to publichealthemergency.gov and register for a TechWatch meeting. We've also set up infrastructure to, to reach out to the innovative sector uh, across the United States government. As I mentioned earlier, innovation is a key to BARDA's continued success moving forward. We established the Division of Research, Innovation and Ventures in 2018, and in that came the um, establishment of 13 accelerator networks uh, across the United States to engage with entrepreneurs and small businesses at various locations uh, across the United States. This gives us a broader reach so that we can engage with them and also um, provide them with the opportunity to engage with the United States government because these small companies would typically not be interested in partnering with us. In 2019, uh, 2018, my apologies, we also partnered with Johnson & Johnson in their J-Labs Innovation Division and established the Blue Knight Program, which is located here in the Washington, D.C. area at Children's National Innovation and Research Campus in D.C. There's wet space lab available um, for companies that are interested in uh, becoming a Blue Knight partner, and we also provide technical and subject matter expertise in development of their programs. And then finally, we launched BARDA Ventures in June of 2020. This was a authority that was provided to us under the 21st Century Cures Act. It's called the Medical Countermeasure Innovation Partner and allows us to partner with an outside entity and our partner we're proud to announce is the Global Health Investment Corporation, which is a venture capital uh, organization. And through partnering with them, we are allowed to use venture capital practices to invest in innovative technologies that are cut, cut across uh, 21st century health security threats. The goal of this program is to establish a 500 million health security impact fund 
and BARDA will be the anchor funder uh, for that program. And as I mentioned, you will hear much more about this uh, in today's presentations. I also want to highlight and announce that there will be a new BARDA strategic plan that will be published in 2022. Our last BARDA strategic plan was published in 2011, uh, and it is time for BARDA to issue another strategic plan. It is based on four pillars of developing life-saving medical countermeasures, safer, faster, and make sure that they're more accessible to all Americans. Maintain a sustainable mission-ready preparedness posture. As I mentioned, we are in the office of the Assistant Secretary for preparedness and response, and we need to make sure that we have uh, staff um, to be able to address a preparedness posture as we move forward. We also will be leveraging mechanisms to foster flexible partnerships and improve our business practices. And we want to build a world class workforce. We already have some of the best individuals in the federal government working for the BARTA organization, and we want to expand that so that we can not only address public health emergencies, but also our day to day work um, to address CBRM pandemic influenza and emerging infectious diseases. I've mentioned several times America's pandemic preparedness plan, and we're very excited about this plan. There are multiple goals, very ambitious goals to develop vaccines within 120 days for the US population and 200 days for the globe, as well as other uh, goals to address therapeutics and diagnostics. We're currently working with HHS leadership to identify a budget that is commensurate with the efforts that will be necessary for BARDA to support America's pandemic preparedness plan. And again, as I mentioned earlier, we are hopeful that this will be sustained funding provided to BARDA uh, to not only address um, emerging infectious diseases, but also uh, future pandemic threats uh, as we move forward. So some of the BARDA highlights, we'll have divisions highlights that I've mentioned before, program deep dives. We're very excited to have lightning talks. And I want to mention that the lightning talks are not only for us, but for, they're for you, our partners. If you hear a lightning talk and it's a technology that you might be interested in potentially partnering with them, please reach out to them. Um, this is part of what we do at BARDA Industry Day. We also have interactive workshops, recognizing again, this is a virtual session. We wanted to be able to have more interaction with you, our partners, and obviously we'll have networking opportunities. So this slide just highlights if you want to register for a TechWatch meeting, it is now open under medicalcountermeasures.gov. Uh, our funding announcements are put on um, sam.gov. Um, the drive hhs.gov, if you are an innovator or a small biotech company uh, that is interested in partnering with us through Drive, through Drive Ventures, please contact us at this website. Or if you're interested in becoming part of the BARDA team, you can find our job announcements on USA Jobs. You can also follow us on social media um, to stay engaged. So I want to thank you for your participation in BARDA Industry Day. Please be engaged uh, through our interactive sessions or um, reach out to us uh, through the various um, contacts that we provide. And I hope you find these uh, presentations informative and enjoy uh, the sessions. Thank you very much.